It take a good, good, good-hearted person to, to volunteer their time. They didn't expect it, but some families on the north side are getting an early Easter surprise. Years of planning, you'll soon be rolling along an old Arlington roadway with a whole new look. This is First Coast News at 11. Good evening, I'm Victor Blank. Well us tonight, a main road in part of Jacksonville is getting a major facelift. The project has been in the works for nearly seven years. The Rojero Road Streetscape project in Arlington is finally beginning to take shape. $800,000 is helping give the roadway a new look and the area new life. First Coast News' Roger Weeder has the details. The city is picking up the tab on resurfacing Rojero Road. That work is considered a bonus, not part of money set aside on what's called the Rojero Streetscape Project. We've got a long way to go. It's going to be really nice. We're proud of it. Roberta Thomas has been involved in the project since day one. What's happened in the past year, rows of palm trees being planted. The commercial stretch of Rojero Road landscape with medians and some bump outs, small medians near some intersections. Some intersections will also be beautified with pavers. Trey Newsom has a restaurant along Rojero Road. He's looking down the road, saying when it's finished, the new look will be good for Arlington. I like it. I think it's going to make it look better. I, I think that, uh, you know, although it may have cost us a few customers here and there during, during this process, that we might gain some customers from it in the, in the near future when it gets all put together. Parts of the project are getting attention. Some complaints about the bump outs at intersections. They are perceived as being a traffic hazard. As road work is taking shape along with the landscaping, Thomas is asking businesses and homeowners not to pass judgment too quickly. I just ask the public to please be patient, please be excited. We have finally got some improvements coming to Arlington and let's all applaud and be proud that we're getting a new facelift for Arlington. The resurfacing work should be finished by the end of the month. The rest of the landscaping work on Rojero Road that's been in the works for years should be finished by the end of the year. In Arlington, Roger Weeder, First Coast News, your news leader. Well, the city is still debating the option to put a roundabout at the Arlington Road, Rojero Road intersection. Nice day on the First Coast, right? Lots of sunshine out there. And tonight is still pretty warm. It's 70, what is that, 72? 72 yeah. degrees. Yeah, that's our temperature downtown. All right, uh, a lot of people. Side. A lot of people are, uh, they've already purchased all their clothes for Easter tomorrow, mm -hmm. and they just need the warm weather to, you know, make sure it's appropriate. Yeah, they got their layaway out in some stores. Yes, yeah, they're, they they're did. ready to go. They're ready to go. You're going to have that Easter bonnet and that new Easter suit, and I think you're going to be just fine for tomorrow. As a matter of fact, if you've got to, uh, you know, put it on one last time and look in the mirror and even step outside with it, you're going to be good. Let's go to Doppler radar right now. Very dry skies, and that's what we expect to see tomorrow during sunrise services and those of you that are going to the uh, to the to the late morning services as well. Right now, 68 degrees on the north side, north northwest wind at seven, and we'll just kind of keep that mild breeze going throughout the night. Uh, down to 62 by 1 a.m., but now near sunrise, overnight lows 57 inland, 62 at the beach with the clear to partly cloudy skies, and that's going to be pretty good. And look at our uh, Easter uh, Easter day forecast. This is nice too. Plenty of sun with low to mid 70s. Now some changes are coming Monday and Tuesday. I'll have details on that in the five day coming up. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Problems with flooding in North Florida are only getting worse now. The National Weather Service says the Santa Fe River rose more than a foot in the last 24 hours. They expected to rise another three feet next week. Now, this is what I saw yesterday near the Alapaha River in Hamilton County. Roads are underwater and people are staying with friends and relatives. Some are in shelters while they're waiting for the waters to recede. Experts now say an F3 tornado, at least one of them, maybe more, with winds at 136 miles per hour ripped through Tennessee and Arkansas this week. It was part of a massive system that battered much of the country over the past two days. Now, the storms have passed, but the cleanup is just getting started. Kristen Dahlgren has more. Incredible images that only begin to tell the story of a horrific night and day where hundreds of thousands took shelter and nature's fury took aim. Sounded like somebody was shooting at the roof. Bang, 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 bang. I saw insulation, house insulation driving, flying past the window. And then I dived into the family room behind the sofa. 
Bill McKay and his wife took cover as a tornado ripped the roof off their Murfreesboro, Tennessee home. They escaped with just scrapes and bruises and a deep appreciation of just how lucky that makes them. There's so much tragedy that can happen with a storm like this. And for us to just live through it with, with our health, really, is amazing. And our guardian angel was looking out for us and taking care of us. But you don't have to go far to find tragedy. In Murfreesboro, a mother and her nine-week-old were killed. In all, the storms took at least six lives, injured dozens, and destroyed hundreds of homes across 15 states. From Thursday through Saturday, there were more than 500 reports of severe weather, over 60 possible tornadoes. A massive swath of damage from Arkansas through Alabama and Georgia. Thousands now left to pick up what nature's trail of terror left behind. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News. Well, more severe weather could sweep through Tennessee tomorrow. One person is dead after a wreck on I-95 just north of Pecan Park Road. That's on the north side of town. The, cat, the crash happened this afternoon in the northbound lanes. The photo highway patrol says Moses and Juanita Morgan were in their RV when their right front tire blew out. Well, the RV ran into some trees. 87-year-old Juanita was killed. Her husband, Moses, had minor injuries. And as you can see from our DOT camera, traffic was backed up for a while and for quite a distance as JFRD worked to clear the mess. Everything is back on track tonight, though. A man in St. Johns County is dead after he was hit by a truck. The Florida Highway Patrol says 49-year-old Scott Treister was driving his truck northbound on US-1 yesterday. And they say Treister veered onto the shoulder. Well, that's where 41-year-old Anthony Hubert was walking. Hubert was killed. Officials are working to determine if alcohol played a part in that crash. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is trying to identify a body found in an old cemetery. Uh, according to our news partner, the Florida Times Union, the body was found at the Oakland Park next to the Old City Cemetery downtown. Officials say the victim is a man in his late 30s to mid 40s. They say he suffered a fatal wound, but the coroner will determine the exact cause of death. Some members of Celebration Church did some major spring cleaning today. They went out to Sharon Fraser's house. There it is. They made a few repairs and added a fresh coat of paint, and they did all this for free. This project is part of their outreach week leading up to Easter. It take a good, good, good-hearted person to, to volunteer their time, even on a Saturday, to come help someone else. I know I've accepted a lot of help from other people, and I just want to give that back to the community. Well, the members also picked up some trash to help clean up that entire block. A U.S. soldier returning home from Iraq got the surprise of a lifetime this afternoon. Friends of Major John Townsend unveiled his newly restored 1980 MGB sports car. While he was gone, his friends restored that classic car as a way of thanking him for his military service. The Army Major was overwhelmed with emotion when his friends presented that car. There I was in shock, and I'm still shaken, and I'm still in shock. This is an incredible surprise. That is a nice ride. Major Townsend has served in the armed, armed services for 20 years. He just returned from his fourth tour of duty in Iraq. Most church choirs sing for the church members, but not at one nut church and not this choir in Minnesota will tell you why the church members sing to them. And two Olympians were on the first coast today. We'll tell you who and why that's coming up in sports. Gold medal weather tomorrow, just about, but Monday and Tuesday, oh, the wet stuff is coming. I'll have details on that, a five-day, and a look at our river levels coming up.